What's up everybody? Dustin here from Solo Travel Blog. Right about now I got a story time in the Orient video backed by popular demand. You voted for it. I heard your voice. So we're about to have a fireside chat about Korea, the land where appearances matter more than you could ever imagine. Now, truth be told, I've been trying to film this fucking video. I mean, I got some uh, sake and a wine glass here. It's kind of hard talking to this inanimate object known as a camera, but I'm trying my best. So I, I figure, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to do one take on this one. No more fucking around, I'm doing one take, right? No more dilly-dallying around, doing this jump cut bullshit. One take, no matter what. Even if I make a mistake, I'm doing one fucking take, baby, okay? So I already poured out some of the sake. I'm getting a little buzz going on here. Drinking some sake out of the wine glass. Let's check it out. Is this thing going to zoom in here? Focus, there we go. Drinking some sake. Getting in the mood. Feeling the motherfucking groove. So, let's top off this puppy. One fucking take, baby. You might think I'm not going to do one take, but oh, I'm doing one take. Don't worry about that. So I should just have an honorable mention before I actually start to the topic at hand. I should probably do an honorable mention of my plant, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I got a plant behind me there I just got, which is pretty nice. I like plants, you know what I mean? But, uh, this plant here has sentimental value. Look at this puppy here. Its name was Slutmaster 2.0, but I don't know. I think it actually deserves better at this point because when I was living back in Shinjuku in the, the fall, in the fall, I actually had this thing fell down uh, maybe 20 times. The room I was staying in didn't have enough sunlight, so I would put this on the wall outside my window. And it's often windy in Tokyo, so the fucking thing would fly off the wall. It fell off many a times, but it survived somehow each time. Then I went to the Balkans now, not too long ago, and uh, I was away for six weeks. This fucking thing, Slutmaster 2.0, somehow it survived. So I'm thinking that uh, we should give it a new name. This plant deserves dignity, deserves respect. It's earned its right to have a better name. So if you can think of a, of a better name than Slutmaster 2.0, let me know down below in the comments section. But anyway, I'm getting a tad off topic over here. Get this fucking thing. I got some notes about Korea, the land where appearances matter more than you could ever imagine. Also known as the video about the cupcake analogy, which I'll probably get to at the end of the video, but I wrote some notes here on the back of a uh, receipt. Basically, I'm getting a little bit organized, but not too organized. So, why Korea? First off, why am I actually talking about Korea? I mean, I haven't been to Korea in years, although I am going there again soon for a short trip, but I haven't been to Korea for a long time. I did live there for three years, but at this point I've now lived in Japan longer than I've lived in Korea. So why Korea, man? Why am I talking about Korea? Well, basically Korea, something about it. It's, it's an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. It's a crazy ass place. It's weird as hell, man. It's interesting to the max, but it's also weird as fuck. Now, probably you're thinking that Japan is weird, weird but interesting, weird but exciting. All I gotta say is, it's not. Japan is not weird. I mean, it seems weird because everything's cherry-picked. You check out something like Rocket News and they show the latest sex bot. Some fucking crazy-ass hologram shit, acid trips from hell. Freaking uh, sex robots, did I already say that? I think I did. Uh, themed restaurants, crazy foods, weird uh, fetishes. It seems like Japan is weird, but it's actually not. It really isn't. I mean, they know how to market things here. People get bored of stuff, so they make new businesses, and then people visit those businesses. But those weird businesses are not even that common. Everyday life is really quite normal here. 
You know, 99.9% .9 of everything in Japan is very easy to understand as far as uh, culturally. It's not weird, just trust me, man. I mean, I've never felt like a diamond was getting shot through my forehead while I was living in Japan. Whereas in Korea, it seemed to happen on a weekly basis. I would feel as though I broke through some crazy ass cultural paradigm as if I understood the very meaning of the universe itself. But actually, um, in Japan, I don't get any of that. Japan, life is just kind of uh, calm, relaxed. Korea, it's like a wild roller coaster ride from hell. So basically, why I'm talking about Korea is because it's sort of like what, it's like an archetype of what you might think any place in Asia might be like. Mystical, wild, difficult to understand. It's a paradigm of sorts, it's an archetype of sorts. Japan is amazing to visit and will seem quite exciting when you're visiting, but actually when you're living here, it's quite normal. In Korea, if you visit, it will seem quite normal, but actually when you live there, you'll realize that you are most certainly not in Kansas anymore. That would be the understatement of the century. So that's why I'm talking about Korea in a lot of these story time videos. Where's my notes? That's why I'm talking about Korea, and that's why... Uh, <coughs> I'm supposed to do one take, right? Fuck it, I can't cut this part. That's why I'm talking about Korea. Because it's weird. I also did a lot of videos on my Patreon about it. But, okay. One fucking take, baby. I'm not gonna cut this. No jump cuts. Basically, living in Korea, it's kinda like Franz Kafka and Hunter S. Thompson had a crazy-ass love child in the Orient. That's what Korea is. They call it the land of the morning calm in Korea, but it's more like the land of the morning dick, if you ask me. Anyway, I'm getting way off topic. You gotta live in a place long enough to see the cultural breakdown situations. The day-to-day -day things that just really don't make sense, you know? When you're living in a place for a short time, you can't see the breakdown situations. When you're living for a longer time, you can. But even in Japan, I've really not seen that many breakdowns. Not like Korea, baby. Not like fucking Korea. Let's look at the first... What's the first bullet point here? Am I right? Number five. Appearances matter. I already said that. Appearances matter. You wouldn't know appearances matter as much as if you had lived in the country for a while. You wouldn't know until you've gotten balls deep inside the country. Deep. Balls deep. You wouldn't know until you accidentally joined a Korean cult. You wouldn't know until you've gone to the very mouth of madness itself. Where's my fucking notes here? Uh, take, for example, the fact that Korea is the plastic surgery capital of the world. Pretty fucking much. I mean, I think only about 20% of women in Korea, only about 20% of women actually get plastic surgery. But it kind of feels like everyone does because essentially everyone is acting to look the same. I mean, not exactly the same, but everyone's kind of trying to get a certain look within a very narrow range of looks. I'm not saying that people look the same. Um, I mean... You know, the, the phrase that people look the same, they think that it's uh, some, some racist thing. Oh, no, man. I can't see color. Did I ever mention that? Um, basically, yeah, obviously joking. People in Korea strive to look the same, whether they consciously realize it or not. When you go from Korea to Japan, after living in Korea for such a long time, you notice that there's a huge range of ways that people look in Japan, as far as how they dress their style, their hairstyle, I mean, um, even their physical appearance. Whereas in Korea, it seems like everyone is striving to look the same. And there are these certain uh, physical attributes as far as facial features and stuff that people strive to attain. One of them being having a, quote, small head. I mean, I guess in Japan, having a, quote, small head is uh, prized, but... Well, in Korea, some people, they apparently get, uh, you know... They get part of their jaw shaved down to actually decrease the size of their head. 
at, at least the physical uh, appearance of their head, you know what I mean? Is this conversation getting weird enough for you? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. So they shave down the side of their uh, jaw here, you know what I mean? Get a nice little V going on. Apparently people like to have that little V. Just get a fucking saw in the uh, surgery room. Just get that fucking shaved down right there. Just shave that shit down. They got that. They got this thing where they snip the side of their eyes to make their fucking eyes look bigger. You know, like, I don't know. They don't have an anime there per se, but something like an anime. Make their eyes look bigger. I even saw some chicks They got some, uh... I don't know if it was some fat deposits or what it was, but they basically got something to make their cheeks look bigger, rounder, and their forehead to look rounder. I saw this one girl, was friend of a friend, she got this freaking thing. I thought she looked like a damn chipmunk after she got that, but I don't know. Maybe that's, that's what gets her, you know, whatever makes her happy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, basically, it gets to the point where people are trying, consciously or unconsciously, to look the same physically. They wear the same sort of clothing and they have the same style. They try to have the same glasses, actually. It's the same for men and women. Um, men don't really get plastic surgery as much, but almost every guy seems to have the same kind of hairstyle. There's some variations with shaving on the side and stuff, but for the most part, the men have their hair long kind of to the sides. Basically, any guy younger than the age of 40 has the same sort of uh, aesthetic look going on. And then uh, people tend to have similar types of glasses. Glasses are very popular. It's almost like a fashion accessory. Of course, anywhere it's a, it's a fashion accessory, but in Korea, everyone seems to have very similar types of glasses. It gets to the point where I even knew someone, this girl who basically felt like she also wanted glasses, but she didn't have bad vision. So she basically just, this was actually when she was younger in school, so I guess she couldn't just justify getting glasses with like a non-prescription, just pure glass with no prescription. She had to actually justify it. So she basically faked, like when she went to a eye doctor, she basically just like failed on purpose, just so she could get glasses, so. Then after she got older, she didn't want glasses anymore, so she got LASIK surgery to make her, because her eyes got bad from wearing glasses, so then after that, she decided she wanted to just be normal again with no glasses, so she got LASIK surgery. So that's the kind of shit that goes down in the land of the morning calm, right? Let's see the next note here. Holy fuck, boy. These notes are getting serious. One fucking take, baby. No jump cuts. Same haircut. Yeah, the, the thing is, it kind of reminds me of an episode of The Twilight Zone. I mean, have you seen The Twilight Zone? Or do you just hear about it? Well, I had to do it, baby. I had to have a jump cut there. Sorry about that. You know, I had to break the seal. Probably means I'm going to start doing a shitload of jump cuts from now on. But, uh, there's actually an episode of The Twilight Zone. I'm not just saying it's like The Twilight Zone. There's actually an episode of The Twilight Zone called Number 12 Looks Just Like You, or Just Like Me. I forget. Number 12 Looks Just Like Me. Let's say that's the name. I have a link to that Twilight Zone episode down below in the description box if you want to check it out. But it's pretty much exactly like Korea in a way. I mean, basically people are pressured to look like maybe there's like four or five different choices of how people can look and then they they tend to aim to look that way whether consciously or unconsciously so I can kinda understand the surgery thing I, I mean I can't uh, understand trying to look exactly the same, but I can kind of understand the surgery thing in a way because just living in Korea, being in that culture, I always felt like people treated me much better when I was looking better. Let's say one day I shaved, I dressed well, I slept well, so I was looking like a little bit energetic and healthy. 
people treated me much better, you know, like really, really well. People would say like, oh, very good, looking handsome today, handsome man, like that. And just like, it seemed like my job was easier, everything was easier. Um, which would probably be true anywhere, but not in such a wide, there's, there's such a wide difference between when you're looking not good and good. If there's a day where I didn't shave or I didn't dress well, if I dressed like kind of like frumpy and just went to the grocery store to get some something to eat, some groceries, people would like probably uh, treat me not as well as far as people would like. It sounds crazy, but people would laugh at you, as crazy as that may sound. People will actually point you out and laugh at you. <laughs> I mean, it sounds it sounds like unreal, but it really happens. So basically, the better you dress in Korea, oh shit, I'm losing my freaking shoe here. The better you dress in Korea, the better you look in Korea, the easier your life. Then I can imagine it's it's uh, normal for people to want to get plastic surgery because then uh, you know their life is easier. It's almost like an investment. It's not so much just to look better, but an actual financial decision. So. What we got next year? When I came to Japan, I was actually kind of surprised. Like, I kind of expected things to be relatively similar as far as when I actually came here to live here. Not when I came to travel, but when I came to live, I thought just working here, it would be much easier if I just looked better, dressed well and everything. But actually, people didn't really treat me differently. Whether I was feeling good one day or if I was feeling sick. If I was feeling sick, people would just like ask me how I'm doing and stuff, but it's not like people treated me like shit when I was looking bad, or let's say if you gain weight or something, people will comment on it. I mean, I didn't notice a difference no matter how I was looking on any particular day in Japan. No one really acted differently, which in a way, I almost felt kind of disappointed by because in Korea, it was more predictable, like you knew that if you just dressed well, people would treat you well, and that was that. So I'm um, actually in a way it was kind of I was kind of sad in in Japan that people would not treat me uh, so well for no fucking reason. So the thing is, it's sort of uh, this weird appearances matter thing, which is true everywhere in the world. Appearances matter, but they matter more in Korea than you can ever imagine. This thing sort of uh, rears its head in various situations. For example, you know, in Asia in general, there's the idea that people tend to follow rules more in theory. I guess, I mean, that's kind of what people think of Japan anyway. Well, in Korea, people follow rules. Um, sometimes they follow rules to the letter. Other times they casually break rules. And it's kind of weird why, but it seemed to me that whenever there was a time where it would appear bad to break a rule, they wouldn't do it. So there was this thing where basically they had crosswalks, of course, and they would have the little lights about whether you could cross or not. But sometimes there'd be like really a, a really narrow road, really narrow with no traffic in sight. And still a lot of times people would just wait at the light, which they actually do in Japan too. Um, but people would wait, would wait in Korea, and I always thought, why are they waiting? Like, I mean, you can obviously see no cars are coming. But I was told by Koreans that they don't cross a street when uh, there's some light, when the light is red, they don't cross because it's not so much that they can't cross, it's that if someone were to see them, like for example, if a child were to see them crossing, while the light was red, then they could actually affect that child and then the child would think it's okay to cross and then they would cross and then put, they could be killed or something. So I kind of get that, but the point is appearances matter and people are watching you all the time. That's another key. People are watching you, whether you, you see them or notice them or not, people are kind of watching you and judging you. So I knew a girl who... Uh, in Korea, she basically told me that when she was a child, there was an aquarium in her house, and she, there was some fish, you know, fish, no matter where they're going, it looks like they're looking at you. 
Well, she thought that the fish were always looking at her no matter where she was because they were judging her. So she didn't want to do anything bad because the fish would judge her. So basically, I mean, to me, that sounds like wild. And I actually did an artwork for that back when I was running the best art websites in the world. Did an artwork about that. Put it right here. You can see the fish are wearing the traditional Korean hats and they're judging the fuck out of this little girl so basically to me that's not exactly something that some normal child would think about I think but it seems to be something that might not be so rare in a country like Korea same with wearing glasses just to ruin your eyesight just to fit in to be cool enough to have glasses I mean I don't think people in America or in the West would wear glasses on, pur on purpose just to fit in, but I don't know, maybe they would. And I don't think that people in the West would shave down their bone just to have a better jaw structure, but I don't know, maybe they would. Maybe I'm just being racist over here, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm being a tad racist, but I think that the culture is very different, you know what I mean? That's why they're kind of freaking notes I got here. I guess it all could be summed up by the cupcake analogy. When I first got to Korea, I noticed that, uh, well, we'd get a lot of little gifts at work, little cupcakes, little random things. I mean, not just cupcakes, but all kinds of stuff. But I remember in particular the cupcake I received at one point, which everything you always received seemed to be really presented well, wrapped well, you know, designed well. This cupcake I had, it looked really good. I can't really remember why I got the cupcake, but I got a cupcake from someone at work. And I loved it. It looked nice. It looked like a nice fucking cupcake. So I went to eat that cupcake, you know, take myself a bite. And when I bit into it, man, it just tasted like it had no flavor at all. It was like really, really bad. I thought, man, what the fuck is wrong with this shit? I was thinking compared to a cupcake you might get in America, maybe even in Japan, there's sort of a sometimes a rustic aesthetic. It's actually quite common in Japan for things to be made to look rustic or kind of like bare bones. Kind of like almost inviting to see something that looks like it's homemade, you know? And so if you had a cupcake, in theory, at least in my mind, the archetype of what a cupcake in America would be would be something that one of your family members would make and you know it doesn't look so good but actually when you bite into it it's like really buttery really sweet and like just really really good that's kind of how you how i would imagine a cupcake to be in my dreams and probably in real life but in korea the cupcake just should look good the thing is it's more important for something to look good than to be good and that's sort of Thing would come up a lot like I worked in some private academy teaching English to students after school sometimes you get a kid who would fail some test and then uh, basically they'd have a retest you know let's give uh, a little Johnny boy here a retest because of course those kids would always take on English names but that's a side topic so you give the kid another retest, he fails again. Well, if they fail again, you actually have to doctor the results to show that he actually passed, which I thought was really fucking weird. I mean, it didn't come up very often, but it came up a few times, and I just thought it was so weird that you would doctor a result instead of, like, maybe um, putting the kid in a different class, different level or something like that, like he's out of his element or she's out of her element. But basically, the thing is, it's better that something looks good than that it actually is good. So appearances matter. It's more important that parents think the kid's doing well than that he's actually doing well. Now, I'm sure there's some, uh, there's some uh, exceptions to this rule, you know. I'm sure you can find companies like Samsung who are innovating, I guess. Um, they're innovating, you know, they're doing stuff well. So they actually care about things looking good and being good. But for the most part, it seems like the general thing that tends to happen in the culture is that things should look good. 
And if they actually are good, that's kind of a secondary worry. It's more important that they should look good. So that's the cupcake analogy. Anyway. Yeah, that's not really the case in Japan. And in a way, I kind of miss it sometimes, but overall, it's better to have something be good than look good. So I think I'm okay living in Japan, also known as the land of the rising dick. But anyway, I don't know, this freaking one take video might look a little bit weird because I kind of lost my train of thought sometimes, but you know what, I'm doing my best, you know what I'm saying? And that's all anyone can ask for. So if you like stories like this, then feel free to check out my Patreon for as little as $1. You can see a shitload of stories that I did about various topics, including when I was briefly in a Korean cult by accident. What other topics I got? I got the five ways that Japan is better than Korea and the five ways that Korea is better than Japan as far as living and traveling. I also got, what do I got? The time I slept in an open air cage on an ancient building near a funeral pyre in India. I got all kinds of stories. You know what I mean? So basically, thanks a lot for watching this video, everybody. I'm going to have a live stream Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA. I'll have that info down below in the comments section of this video. So thanks a lot for watching this video, everybody. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think. Thanks.